We want faster Wi-Fi. We want faster internet. We want to be able to play games without lagging. And we want to be able to stream without buffering. Is that too much to ask for? Oh yes, we also don't want to spend a lot of money on our hardware to do those things. So today, I'm checking out a router that only costs $50. Now the big question is, is it worth it or a complete waste of money? Well, let's find out. Break it down now, phone, gadget. Hey, welcome to another episode of Talking Tech with the Techie Guy. My name is Liron Segev, where I make tech simple. If you're into phones, gadgets, apps, tips and tricks and how to, hit that subscribe button and let's get on to today's show. So this is it. This is the Rockspace AC1200 dual band smart Wi-Fi that Rockspace has very kindly sent to me. Now, if you remember, I have reviewed a Rockspace system before. It was the whole home mesh Wi-Fi system, which was absolutely superb. Speeds are incredible, but at $130, it's on the high side. And not everybody's ready to drop that kind of cash. So what do you get for 50 bucks? You get the router. You also get the power brick and you get a LAN cable. So let's look at the router itself. You can see that it does look like it means business. It looks pretty serious. On the top here, you've got a couple of LEDs, which are going to be for power, 2.4 gigahertz, 5 gigahertz, your LAN connection, and then your WPS. Turn this around to the back. You've got a couple of LAN ports here, which are gigabyte ports and a WAN port, and the power on switch. Now, the obvious bits here are the antennas. Now, these are important. Now, not only do they have this orange looking thing, which is just good for visual effects, but they're high powered antennas. There are four of the five DBI high performance antennas, and they can cover around a 1500 square feet home. Okay, now this is dual band, which basically means 2.4 gigahertz and five gigahertz. You get 867 megabits per second on the five gigahertz and 300 megabits per second on the 2.4 gigs. Here's the important bit. The router can actually handle the multi-user, multiple input, multiple output technology. And what does that mean? Well, the older routers, what we used to call them as polite routers, because what a router does is that it's very polite. It only speaks to one device at a time. And the router says, hold on, I can only speak to this device right now and exchange the data. Then I'm gonna to speak to the next device and exchange the data. So you can imagine with the average household having at least eight devices these days, well, that's a lot of wait time for these devices to get the router's attention. This one, not so polite. Because of the way the technology is built in here, it can talk to multiple devices at the same time. It also has beam forming technology. And what does that mean? It focuses the signal towards the receiving device as opposed to simply spraying it around the room, hoping to make some sort of a connection. The results of all this technology means that you're gonna get a faster connection, more reliable, less buffering, good ping rates, and all of this for $50. The question is, does it actually work? Well, let's get into that now. Okay, so now that we've seen all the theory, let's see how it actually works in the real world. Let's do some couple of tests. So here we go, I'm now connected to the five gigahertz band. I'm right next to the router, 866 megabits per second. That's the signal strength that I'm getting between my phone and the router itself. Now, the further that I walk away from it, of course, the signal becomes weaker and weaker and weaker, and therefore the megabits per second starts to drop, and that's expected. In fact, let me go do a stress test. Let me go outside. Okay, so in the garden we go. Uh, let's see what we're at. We're at 39 megabits per second. And as we walk away, 26, 26, seems to be stabling around 26. Yeah, it's around 26, 28, fluctuates there. The question is, what does that translate to in the real world? So let's take away the mobile data just to make sure that we're still definitely only on the five gigahertz band and run a good old speed test. Obviously, I'm fast forwarding this, but so you don't have to be bored by it. 80.1 megabits per second when download, 19.5 upload. I think that's acceptable. Let's watch one of my videos so I don't give myself my own copy layer. strike. So and you can see no buffering, there, no lag. Alright, so far, so right. good. Okay, thank you neighbor for hooting right at that particular moment. That was lovely. Uh, let me just show you how far I am actually from the office itself. Just so that you get some idea of distance and in fact, Speaking of distance, let's take this up a notch. Let's go a step further. This time, let's go for a bit of a drive and see how far we can get away from the house before the signal cuts out completely.
Okay, so I may not have thought this through and brought a tripod. I may be hand holding my camera and trying to drive. Not the smartest thing. Don't try this at home. But the idea is to try to get the signal down to 13 to 1 megabits per second. And that I know it means we've lost signal completely. And then we'll stop the car. Let's see until we get it. There we go. There it is. Let's get out of the car. See how far we are. Okay, that's a pretty good distance. I cannot believe that all of this is packed into a $50 router. It will be in the description below if you want to get more information or check it out. If you want some more Wi-Fi tips and tricks, check out these videos down here. If this is your first time that you're here, hit the head below to subscribe. Give the video a thumbs up if you liked it. And I'll see you in those videos. Let's go.